So, here is chapter 30. It's, it says, I call to every time to the Lord. So, in the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses, I have listed for you. And when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has excelled you, take to heart all these instructions. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with all your heart and all your soul and all your commands, all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and he will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has gathered you. Even though you are banished to the ends of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back again. The Lord your God will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous in numbers than your ancestors. The Lord your God will change your heart and the heart of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul and so you may live. Um, the Lord your God will reflect all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate and persecute you. Then that you were again obey the Lord and keep all the commands that I'm giving you today. The Lord your God will make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous livestock, and he will cause your fields to produce abundant harvests. Hold on for a second. Guys. This phone is so freaking blurry. I don't know why. It's supposed to be an iPhone. The Lord will again delight in being good to you. He was to your ancestors. The Lord your God will delight in you. If you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in his book of instruction, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. The choice of life or death. This command I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you and it is not beyond your reach. 
if it's not kept in heaven. So this thing that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey. It is not kept beyond the sea so far that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey. No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. <clears throat> Now listen today, I'm giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you to stay to love the Lord your God and keep to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter in that kapai. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I will warn you. Now that you will certainly be destroyed, you will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. But if your heart, yeah, <coughs> then I will warn you that you will certainly be destroyed and you will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <sighs> so that's Deuteronomy chapter 30. I don't know where I'm going. I pushed the wrong one. Verses, do I know for you, verses 11 and 14 discuss how God commands our assets full and dotable within the people's power to obey, paying debts fully on and on a time and certainly within one's means, one making a sincere effort. Verse 15 says, God has set life and prosperity, death and never see it before the people. Choosing life involves honoring responsibilities like timely debt repayments to enjoy the blessings of prosperity. Verse 16 echoes this that obeying God's precepts leads to a long life in the promised land. Paying creditors promptly helps sustain one's livelihood and credit worthiness. Throughout Deuteronomy, the people are encouraged not to oppress or defraud fellow Israelites in business dealings. Paying more than the minimum avoids burning lenders with long-term interest obligations. Chapter 30 portrays the rewards of diligently fulfilling one's duties to God and community responsibility. Responsible credit management through larger payments reflects acting with integrity and financial commitments. 
So in summary, Deuteronomy supports basic obligations, head on through prompt good faith efforts to resolve debts. They honor biblical teachings of accountability, compassion, and choosing blessings through upright conduct and relationships, paying more than minimum echoes these principles. Okay. That was the wrong one. So Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30 is a chapter in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses presents a choice between life and death, blessings and curses to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, Moses continues his address to the Israelites, speaking about the future and the consequences of their choices. He reminds them that God's commandments are not too difficult to follow and that they have the ability to choose life by loving and obeying God. Deuteronomy 30 teaches us several significant lessons, the power of choice. Moses appraises that the Israelites have the power to choose between life and death, blessings and curses. This teaches us that we also have the freedom to make choices that impact our lives and our relationship with God. Our choices have consequences and it is important to choose wisely. The call to love in God, to love and obey God. Moses encourages the Israelites to love and obey God with all their hearts and souls. He reminds them that God's commandments are not burdensome, but rather for their own good. This teaches us the importance of wholeheartedly loving and obeying God, recognizing that his commandments are meant to guide us and bless our lives. God's faithfulness and restoration, Moses ensures the Israelites that even if they have been scattered or faced hardships due to their disobedience, God will restore them if they turn back to him and seek him with all their hearts. This teaches us about God's faithfulness, his willingness to forgive, and his desire to restore and reconcile us to himself. The Deuteronomy chapter 30 is specific to the Israelites, and we can draw practical applications from it by, number one, choose life, recognize the power of choice in our lives, and strive to choose the path that leads to life and blessings. This involves loving and obeying God, following his commandments, and seeking his guidance in all aspects of our lives. Two is wholehearted devotion, cultivate a heart of love and devotion towards God, seek to obey him, not out of obligation, but out of a genuine desire to honor and please him. Allow his commandments to shape our thoughts and attitudes and actions. Repentance and restoration. If we have strayed from God's ways, remember that he is a God of grace and restoration. Turn back to him with a repentant heart, seeking his forgiveness and restoration. Embrace his love and allow him to work in our lives to bring about healing and rid of contemplation. So in summary, Deuteronomy 30 teaches us that the power of choice to call to love and obey God and faithfulness, faithfulness and restoration of God. May we choose life by wholeheartedly loving and obeying God. And when we fall short, may we humbly seek his forgiveness and restoration knowing that he is faithful and to restore and bless those who turn to him. Chapter 31, Joshua becomes Israel's leader. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me you will not cross the Jordan River. 
But the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river just as the Lord promised. The Lord will destroy the nations living in the land just as he destroyed Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites. The Lord will hand over to you the people who live there, and you must deal with them as I have commanded you. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Then Moses called for Joshua, and as all Israel watched, he said to him, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grants of land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Public Reading of the Book of Instruction so Moses wrote this entire body of instruction in a book and gave it to the priests who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and to the elders of Israel. Then Moses gave them this command. At the end of every seventh year, the year of release, during the festival of shelters, you must read this book of instruction to all the people of Israel when they assemble before the Lord your God at the place he chooses. Call them all together, men, women, children, and the foreigners living in your towns, so they may hear this book of instruction and learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully obey all the terms of these instructions. Do this so that your children who have not known these instructions will hear them and will learn to fear the Lord your God. Do this as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Israel's Disobedience Predicted then the Lord said to Moses, The time has come for you to die. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tabernacle, so that I may commission him there. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves at the tabernacle, and the Lord appeared to them in a pillar of cloud that stood at the entrance to the sacred tent. The Lord said to Moses, You are about to die and join your ancestors. After you are gone, these people will begin to worship foreign gods, the gods of the land where they are going. They will abandon me and break my covenant that I have made with them. Then my anger will blaze forth against them. I will abandon them, hiding my face from them, and they will be devoured. Terrible trouble will come down on them. And on that day they will say, These disasters have come down on us because God is no longer among us. At that time I will hide my face from them on account of all the evil they commit by worshipping other gods. So write down the words of this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Help them learn it so it may serve as a witness for me against them. For I will bring them into the land I swore to give their ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. There they will become prosperous, eat all the food they want, and become fat. But they will begin to worship other gods. They will despise me and break my covenant. And when great disasters come down on them, this song will stand as evidence against them, for it will never be forgotten by their descendants. I know the intentions of these people, even now before they have entered the land I swore to give them. So that very day Moses wrote down the words of the song and taught it to the Israelites. Then the Lord commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, with these words, Be strong and courageous, for you must bring the people of Israel into the land I swore to give them. I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing this entire body of instruction in a book, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Take this book of instruction and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so it may remain there as a witness against the people of Israel. For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. Even now, while I am still alive and am here with you, you have rebelled against the Lord. How much more rebellious will you be after my death? Now summon all the elders and officials of your tribes so that I can speak to them directly and call heaven and earth to witness against them. I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and will turn from the way I have commanded you to follow. In the days to come disaster will come down on you, for you will do what is evil in the Lord's sight, making him very angry with your actions. The Song of Moses so
one in the top here. Thirty one. Deuteronomy thirty one is be strong and courageous, do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you, and he will not leave you or forsake you. Moses is addressing the Israelites, preparing them for their entry in the promised land. He encouraged them to be strong and courageous, assuring them that God will be with them and will never abandon them. This verse teaches us that to trust in God's presence and faithfulness in all circumstances. When we face challenges, uncertainties, or even fear, we can find strength and courage knowing that God is with us. We can rely on his constant presence and find comfort in his unwavering love and support. The Lord God himself goes before you and will be with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you, and do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Moses retreats God's promise to the Israelites, assuring them that God will personally go before them, leading and protecting them, and he encouraged them, once again, not to be afraid or discouraged. This verse reminds us that we are not alone in our journey through life, God goes before us, leading and guiding us through every step. We should not allow fear or discouragement to hinder our progress, our faith. Instead, we can find confidence and hope in God's presence, knowing that he is actively working in our lives. Now, therefore, write this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Put it in your mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the people of Israel. God instructs Moses to write a song and teach it to the Israelites. The song would serve as a witness against them, reminding them of God's faithfulness and their responsibility to follow him. This verse affirms the importance of remembering and proclaiming God's faithfulness and teachings and encourages us to engage in worship and song, using them as tools to testify to God's goodness and to remind ourselves and others of his faithfulness. It also reminds us the significance of passing down our faith and teachings to the next generation, ensuring that they too have a strong foundation in God's word, the Bible. In summary, Deuteronomy 31 provides a valuable lesson about trusting in God's presence, finding courage, and remembering his faithfulness. It encourages us to lean on God's promises, not allowing fear or discouragement to hinder our faith. Additionally, it reminds us of the importance of worship and passing down our faith to future generations. This teaching can be practically applied in our lives as we navigate challenges and seek God's guidance and share his love and trust with others. Deuteronomy chapter 31, 27-29, Moses knew that the Israelites, despite all they had seen of God's work, were rebellious at heart. They deserved God's punishment, although they often received his mercy instead. We too are stubborn and rebellious by nature. Throughout our lives, we struggle with sin. Repentance once a month or once a week is not enough. We must constantly turn from our sins to God. And let his mercy save us. It is true 
It is true that as humans, we can often find ourselves complaining and grumbling, just as the Israelites did in their journey through the wilderness. However, it's encouraging to recognize that God is always ready to help and guide us through our struggles. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8, the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Context, Moses is addressing Joshua and the Israelites encourage them to have faith as they prepare to enter the promised land. He reminds them that God goes ahead of them and will not abandon them, urging them not to fear or be discouraged. This reverse reminds us that God is always ahead of us, preparing the way and guiding our steps. We should trust in his presence and faithfulness, even in the face of challenges or uncertainties. Instead of complaining or being filled with fear, we can lean on God's promises and find peace in his unwearing support. Deuteronomy verse 9, then Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests. The son of the Levi who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 9. Context, after God speaks to Moses, he writes down the law and entrusts it to the priests and elders of Israel ensuring its preservation and transformation to future generations. This verse highlights the importance of God's word, the Bible, and its growing guiding our lives. Just like Moses wrote down the law, we have the privilege of having the complete word of God in the Bible. By studying and applying his teachings, we can find guidance, wisdom, and strength to overcome challenges and avoid falling into constant complaints. We should prioritize immersing ourselves in scripture and allowing it to shape our perceptive and actions. Where Deuteronomy chapter 13, their children who have not known were here and learned to fear the Lord your God as long as you live on the land. Which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 13. 13. Context Moses appraises the importance of passing down God's teachings to the next generation, ensuring that they continue to fear and honor the Lord. This verse reminds us our responsibility to teach and model a faithful life to the younger generations. By doing so, we can help them develop perseverance and trust in God. As we focus on teaching and mentoring others, we can also reflect on our own attitudes and actions seeking to cultivate a grateful and trusting heart rather than then falling into a pattern of complaints. In summary, Deuteronomy 31 offers valuable lessons about trusting in God's presence, valuing his word, and pressing down our faith to future generations by trusting in God's faithfulness, immersing ourselves in his word and actively teaching and modeling a faithful life to others. We can move away from a mindset of constant complaining and instead find peace and gratitude in God's provision and guidance. So, Deuteronomy The last pages are Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 33 